Before joining in the summer, not many Blues fans would have known too much about Darren Randolph. But after just four games, the Irish keeper has already made a big impression at St Andrews. Perhaps somewhat surprisingly, as football was a sport that didn't interest Randolph until his teenage years. I only ended up playing football because all my friends played, whereas I always loved basketball. But my group of friends played football, so on the weekends that's just, you know, we go training, go playing the games, and then that would be it. So that's really the only reason why I played. And then the older I got, uh, people kept telling me I was, I could have a, a good chance of, of going somewhere in football. But I was like, nah, I'll stick to basketball, thanks. But then when I got to about 14, 15, I thought, well, maybe I can have a better chance in football than I would in basketball. So I made the change and uh, just stuck with football. Did it help, I suppose, using your hands all the time in basketball in terms of becoming a goalkeeper? Uh, I, yeah, possibly. I think I played Gaelic football as well. I used my hands in that. I played a bit of hurling. But hurling didn't last long because I got hit across the back of the hands with the, with the hurls. I broke a few knuckles and that's not, that's not nice. So the Gaelic and I played a bit of rugby as well, so I thought I think they all help, yeah. How much of a, an influence was your dad on your career? Because he was the, the first ever American basketball player to, to play in Ireland, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah, he's he one of the first, yeah. And, um, you know, so obviously when I was younger, anywhere he went, I wanted to be there. So anytime he was, he was playing basketball, I was always there bouncing a basketball and somewhere in the background or running around the gym somewhere. But again, he never kind of pushed me to to basketball or football or any other sport, he just let me do what I wanted to do. He just said to me, be good in school, and I was the opposite in school, so luckily football's working out for me at the minute. And obviously you began your career with your, your local team in Ireland and they made a, a big choice, I imagine, for, for a young lad at the time to, to go and live in London and, and play for Charlton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, um, again, like I said, my mum and dad wanted me to stay in in school and go over a couple of years later, but you know I had no interest in that. I wanted to go then and, and there and uh, you know give it a go and see see what would happen. Um, and luckily enough, they they let me go. They met like the academy um, director and everything and the education uh, officer at Charlton, and um, they are reassured that I'd be doing my schoolwork and stuff. So I ended up going over. Randolph left his native island in 2004 to join Charlton Athletic and initially found the switch to English football a tough one. So initially when I went over there, obviously playing with all the, with the good players, it was a massive step up for me from, from Sunday league football and uh, you know the whole kind of diet side of things and going in the gym. I, I didn't do any of that back in Dublin. You know, I'd, I'd go football, stop at a chipper on the way home, and I'd be off playing snook or a pool or be on the golf course or pitch and putt or doing whatever, run around the bowling alley or run around the streets doing something. So it was a whole new experience uh, for me when I went over. And you made your debut at Anfield, which is, not a lot of people can say that, I suppose. That must have been some experience. Yeah, it was. It was the day, I remember clearly, it was the day after I turned 20. I turned 20 on the, the Saturday, the game was on the Sunday. And uh, family all came over. My dad's a Liverpool supporter as well. From when he played in, he played in Liverpool uh, for a couple of years. So uh, yeah, it was an amazing day, and um, played played well. If I do say so myself. Ended up drawing the game um, two each. Uh, it was Robbie Fowler's last ever um, game for Liverpool as well. So or maybe last ever game. Um, so it was a memorable occasion. You moved to Motherwell. Great decision on, on reflection because that's what really kick-started your career as a as a recognised goalkeeper. Yeah, um, a few people at the start when I left were, were questioning, you know, what was it the best decision, and you know they're telling me, you know, I hope it works out, and, and you know, um, fingers crossed, and all the rest of it. But I've, I'm a confident person, so I knew if I went there and, and then played and showed what I could do, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't be back uh, long till I'd be back down back down south, um, and. I wanted to be there for a couple of years and then come back, but I ended up staying there for three. But like I said, um, I think about 150 games for them in the in the three years I was there. So um, it stood me in good stead, you know. Um, it's got me kind of back on the goalkeeping map and got my name back around, and I've you know I've proved to people um, that I can I can play and I'm good enough to to hold a number one jersey. 
and it was you had a tough act to follow, didn't you, at Motherwell? Because John Ruddy had had gone there the season before and, and had a terrific time there. So the, the spotlight was perhaps on you a little bit more than it would have been yeah. had it had he not been there. Uh, I remember watching uh, before I went to Motherwell, watching a game and they were on TV against somebody, and John Ruddy was in goal. So eventually the move came about. <clears throat> I went there and they were like, "Oh, you know, you got a tough act to follow." And, and John Ruddy set like a few, a couple of records and stuff, clean sheet records and everything else. So I was like, well, that's him. I was like, this is me. I was like, we'll see. You know, after a couple of months and you can tell me, you can tell me what you think. So, um, like I said, it, it couldn't have went, it couldn't have went any better. Um, I went in there, I broke all the records that he held, um, you know, played consistently for the three years. And um, yeah, like I said, it, it, it couldn't, have been, couldn't have been better. It must have made you slightly less daunted about replacing three of the the current England goalkeepers that had yeah. been at Birmingham before you arrived. Yeah, I've been I've been reminded of that as well. But like I said, I've been in the same position the last time having to go to Motherwell and replace um, John Ruddy, who who the Motherwell fans held in in um, you know in, in, in such a high regard. Um, and you know they should he's a good goalkeeper. The same with the with the three people you just named there. Um, but. You know, again, that's football. Like players come, players go, and now it's up to me to go in and put in consistent performances, and then hopefully people be saying, you know, hopefully you can come in and replace Darren Randolph. Blues' new number one has played a pivotal role for Lee Clark's side. The Irishman has already put in a number of key performances and is loving life with Blues. I love it here from when I first um, came into the building. Uh, again, the, the the staff and, and the boys that are around the place made it easy to to settle in. There's there's a good vibe around the place and you know everyone uh, everyone gets on me all of a laugh and the joke uh, and like, it's been easy to settle in. It feels like I've been there for a lot longer than than two months. And on the training pitch as well, you've got competition from a, a fellow Irishman. I know you, you get on quite well. There must be quite a, a good bit of banter between yourself and Colin Doyle. Uh, yeah, there's banter between us two, but we tend to gang up on on the goalkeeping coach a lot until we get our own way. I've known Doyle for, for years, so uh, yeah, it's, it's good working with him. We've got a good uh, understanding between each other. And again, like healthy competition, you know, he's an international goalkeeper himself. Um, so again, it keeps me, keeps me on my toes. Um, and I know I need to perform um, at a high level, you know, to, to keep my place. Yeah, you've got the nod and you must be pleased with, with how it's gone so far. Yeah, very happy um, personally, but again, it was even better just to get that first win um, at Yeovil, a tricky, a tricky away time, you know, with them kind of, it was like a kind of party time atmosphere for them. First time being in championship, having a big team, like a big club like Birmingham come to them for the first home game. And again, them coming off the back of beating Millwall and whoever they beat in the in the Carlin One Cup as well. So uh, we knew it was going to be tough, but again, just to get that first win, because um, you know we played played well against Watford, and to come out with with no points was was a bit hard to take. But always good to to make an early impression. I imagine some goalkeepers can perhaps come into a club and not have too much to do. But oh, that's true. And like you said, you know, to um, come into a club like this after the goalkeepers that have been here, you know. Uh, Everything could have went wrong, and um, you know, could have been a, a, could have been a nightmare start. But I can I can only do what I can do. You know, I can't do anything with the past who was here. All I can do is go out and, and play my game. And again, like I said, hopefully put in good enough performances for for people to get behind me and the rest of the team, and uh, just go from there. Very much a, a new team this year. Lots of players as well as yourself starting afresh at, at, at the club. What can be achieved this season? Is it, is it difficult to tell so far? Um, I think we wanted to get a uh, get off to a good start this year because we were reminded the club didn't go to the best start last year and um, how difficult it was again to, to build up momentum. Um, you know, we spoke about the home form from last year and that can be improved. <clears throat> so, I think amongst ourselves, you know, top half is is what we're expecting. But then, again, you know, who's to say that we can't make it into the playoffs? You know, you look at the other teams. Um, 
the so-called big teams that are that are there or the bigger teams that are there. Um, you know, there's no reason why after our performance display so far, you know, against Watford, why we can't be um, up in the top half, you know, in around the playoffs. With the visit to promotion contenders Leicester City on the horizon, Randolph knows that he will need to be his best once more if Blues are to get a positive result.